Around this vast desert basin, a nomadic people originally from Mongolia developed scattered agricultural oases. They settled as farmers and survived from mountain streams watering their land. In this remote northwest corner of China live eight million people, one of the world's largest and least evangelized people groups. Their name derived from the founders of a desert kingdom, a people desperately needing the life-giving waters of God's Spirit. The Uyghurs, an oasis in the desert. For centuries, Uyghur merchants served as middlemen for the commercial caravans that traversed the ancient Silk Road between the Orient and the Mediterranean. Numerous cultural relics and historic monuments are preserved along the Silk Road. A highway that shaped history, a conduit for conversion, commerce and conquest. Since 1875, when China conquered eastern Turkestan and named the province Xinjiang, meaning New Frontier, the Uyghur homeland has been very important to China. It occupies one-sixth of the total land area, shares international borders with eight nations, is militarily strategic and has great mineral wealth. The Chinese are in firm control of the region. Due to a massive forced migration, almost half of the total population of 16 million in the province are Han Chinese. Over the last 30 years, there has been continued tension and unrest. During the political upheavals of the 1960s, up to half a million Uyghurs fled across the borders and now reside in Central Asia, Turkey, Afghanistan and other places around the world. The industrial and political capital of Xinjiang is rapidly developing. Urumqi, one of the most inland cities of the world. Only 10 to 15 percent of its 1.5 million residents are Uyghur. Dual language signs cater for the inhabitants speaking Mandarin or Uyghur. Kashgar is the cultural and religious center of the Uyghur people. On traditional Islamic feast days, tens of thousands gather at the mosque. A thriving Sunday bazaar attracts thousands of people, all competing for space with livestock, camels, produce and handicrafts. Evidence of a rich and colorful cultural heritage is seen in the many Uyghur men who wear embroidered skull caps and proudly display their handmade decorative knives. The conservative Muslim women wear veils, while most other Uyghur women wear brightly colored scarves and dresses made of uniquely patterned silk. Chinese by nationality, yet ethnically and culturally Turkic people, the Uyghurs have kept the strong cultural tradition. The Uyghurs love to perform. Travelers to the oasis town of Turfan are greeted with pleasant song and dances under grape vine trellises. The Uyghurs are known as one of the world's most musical people. The Uyghurs are also great eaters. Most Uyghurs are farmers. They also do brisk trade in dried fruit, rugs and animal skins. Today, most Uyghurs are Sunni Muslim. However, history reveals that the Uyghurs were not always Islamic. Living at a cultural crossroads, they were influenced by various religious worldviews. Many Uyghurs had an exposure to Christianity. The Uyghurs were one of the first Mongolian tribes to convert to Christianity in the 8th century. The Uyghurs became a literate people through a script worked out for them by Nestorian Christian missionaries in the Uyghurs' Tarim Basin.
Marco Polo's 13th century account of his Silk Road travels included mention of several of these churches. However, by the 15th century, these churches were stamped out as Islam forcibly spread throughout the area. Centuries later, the first evangelical missionaries from Sweden arrived. Their ministry and medical services helped to establish an indigenous church of over 200 adults. However, a series of persecutions in the 1930s wiped out the young Uyghur church. The men were persecuted or killed and the women forcibly married off to Muslim men. The twin chains of communism and Islam have kept many Uyghurs in bondage, unaware of the liberating truths of the gospel. There are now more than 15,000 mosques in Xinjiang and the Quran has also been printed in modern Uyghur. While the southern half of Xinjiang remains the stronghold of Islam, Uyghurs in the north, especially in urban centers, are typically nominal. Throughout Xinjiang, there are possibly as many as 50,000 Han Chinese Protestants, but there is a reluctance to share the gospel with their Uyghur neighbors. Overseas Chinese are seeking ways to minister in Xinjiang, model Christian love and influence the local believers' involvement. Pray for the many Han Chinese believers in Xinjiang, that they will get a burden and vision from the Lord to reach out to their Uyghur neighbors with the gospel. Pray that enmity between the races would be broken. Despite years of toiling and planting seeds in rocky soil, now an unusual spiritual hunger is evident and many are responding to Christ as never before. Uyghur spiritual leaders are slowly emerging and God is building his church. Since the collapse of the former Soviet Union, Uyghurs in Kazakhstan have been remarkably open to the gospel message. Though modern missionary efforts there only began in 1993, there are now over 60 baptized Uyghur believers who are also reaching out to their own people. My grandma has been just sharing about how the most of our family came to the Lord. Last year she, she went to her homeland, Xinjiang, China, and she was, she was preaching to her family about Jesus, and some of them believed too. And soon, me and my grandmother are actually going to go back to China as we have the burden for people to know the Lord. These are exciting days to work amongst the Uyghur peoples of Central Asia. Because of the openness here, we've been able to rent halls and do evangelistic crusades, and literally hundreds of Uyghur people have heard the gospel for the first time in their lives. In the same way that God led me over here, God is beginning to lead others. Singles and families are coming to work amongst the Uyghurs here. The dramatic responsiveness in Kazakhstan is evident as small clusters of Uyghur believers are meeting for worship and fellowship. Even entire households and families are coming to Christ. Yet these new believers need a modern translation of the Bible, discipleship, and evangelistic literature to help grow and share their faith. Pray that scriptures and other materials will be produced both in the Uyghur Arabic script used in China and the Cyrillic script used in Kazakhstan. Pray for the translation, distribution and receptivity to Christian literature. While a number of Uyghur house groups meet in Kazakhstan in the process of establishing an indigenous Uyghur church, the Uyghur believers in China are still without a strong church. There is not yet the same responsiveness as there is in Kazakhstan. Those who have come to faith, mainly single men, have struggled to grow in the face of persecution. Pray that the handful of believers would be strong and faithful. A Uyghur believer has written and recorded this worship song that shares the heart cry of their people. Only recently, 
Radio broadcasts in Uyghur have enabled isolated Uyghurs to hear the good news of the gospel, and improved broadcasts are now reaching Uyghurs in Xinjiang. The Jesus film and other media are also recently available and have proven to be effective as discipleship and evangelistic tools. Pray for these resources and the production of more tools, such as music and evangelistic tapes and videos, to touch the hearts of the Uyghurs with the hope and love of Christ. And we have adopted the Uyghurs in the city of Urumqi. In our last trip, we participated in praying to the 100 gateway cities. God began to lay a burden and a desire send people there to work on a long-term basis amongst the Uyghurs. Much remains to be done. Let us ask the Lord of the Harvest to send forth more messengers to reach the many unreached Uyghur villages throughout the province, so more Uyghurs might hear and that churches may be planted among those who believe. The blood of the martyrs spilled over this desert area cries out for the redemption of its people, the Uyghurs. May the rain of the Holy Spirit come like an oasis in the desert and bring new life to the Uyghur people. May our prayers and efforts for the Uyghurs continue to bring them Jesus' life-giving waters. The Lord has promised, I will make rivers flow in the desert so that people will see and know that the hand of the Lord has done us. Fill us away.